Hello there, and welcome to Lesson 5 on this series on Game Maker Studio 2, created for the students at Saturday Academy. I am the instructor, Will Patillo, and uh, today we're going to be dealing with the, uh, sword swinging, or the giving the player a sword that they can strike in various directions to defeat some of these enemies. Uh, so we're going to be using the space bar, and I want to be able to press the space bar and have a sword show up in my hand in the direction I'm moving. So if I'm Moving to the left, uh, sword shows up over here to the left, right, sword shows up to the right, up, it's up above me, and down, it's down here. And then if the sword hits an enemy, then that uh, removes it from the game. That's, that's what we're going for. So first of all, uh, what we're going to need is a, a sprite for this sword. Um, so I'm going to um, create a sprite, so right click, create sprite. And I'm going to call it SPR Sword. And uh, 32 by 32 sounds fairly good. Make sure the anchor point is in the middle center. And now let's just draw a quick sword right here. That'll work for our sword. Make sure it's facing to the right, uh, so that way angle 0 is the way it's drawn normally. And then the rotation will make a lot more sense this way. So we got our sprite. Now we'll need to create an object to uh, give give the sword to. So uh, right click, create object, and obj sword. And we're going to assign it a sprite, or the sprite sword. OK, so now we have an object with a sprite attached. And uh, now we need to be able to create this sword in the game. Uh, so I'm going to be using the space bar for my attack. So that means we're going to need a uh, key press space event. So add event, key pressed, and space. So this uh, is the event that will create the sword. So the idea of, of how this is going to work is there is no sword in the game. And to simulate the concept of swinging a sword, we're just going to create one and then destroy it after a little while. So uh, to create a sword, I'm going to start looking for create. And here we go. Create instance. Creates an instance of an object. Uh, that brings us in here. So first field is to specify what object we're going to create. And that's going to be the sword. And uh, we'll leave these at 0, 0 for now, but tick the relative boxes. Because, uh, again, this event is occurring in the player object. Uh, ticking the relative boxes means it's going to be at the location of the player. <coughs> right now it's going to be right on top of the player, and we're going to want to move it to the side or up or down, uh, but we'll deal with that next. That's okay, so that uh, creates a sword. Let's go ahead and test this out. Okay. And yes, I am creating swords and placing them all over this place. OK, good. Next, I want them to disappear after a little while. Well, this relates to time, so that means an alarm event. So let's just go into our sword and just let the sword be responsible for destroying itself. Because uh, the player is doing a lot. Uh, offloading work onto other things is uh, going to be helpful. So in a create event, the sword's going to disappear a certain amount of time after it's created. So on create, uh, look for it'll set an alarm. And uh, this will be our swing time, essentially, right here. Uh, we can just leave it at half a second for now. Um, we can always change it as needed. And now this alarm countdown is going to call uh, create a alarm event or have that fire so we need to create the event alarm zero so this is what's gonna run uh, once this countdown completes and now at this point we're going to destroy the sword so start typing in destroy here's a uh, destroy instance create that and by default it's going to apply to itself so let's run this And now I can create swords, but after a little while, they go away. And so now I'm not stuck with a ton of them. OK. 
So next thing is I want to place the sword not at zero, zero, but at some distance uh, in the direction that I am facing, uh, which means that this key press space event is going to need to know where, which direction the player is facing. So let's see where that's being set. So in these key press left events, uh, I'm setting my direction to be left and I'm setting my sprite to walk to the left. However, I am not, there's no general purpose facing value uh, that's just, uh, that's uh, keeping track of all this. So I am going to create a new variable in my player and uh, assign a variable. And I'm going to create this facing variable. That, this is the thing that we can track. It'll be kind of a global to the object. And uh, whenever we have a movement, we'll change this facing value. Uh, and then this will control where things happen, like a, which direction a sword goes and so on. So it'll be look like this. Assign variable facing to down, and this is in the player. Now in our movement, now this is uh, receiving argument zero uh, for its, its set direction variable. So we can actually, since we're getting our direction as argument zero, I can just assign variable facing to argument zero. So now this argument zero will not only set our character's direction, it'll also set this persistent facing value. And actually, just for a little bit of clarity, I'm going to change this set direction variable to facing. So that way it's a little bit more descriptive. Uh, argument zero is kind of uh, not really clear what it means just, just by the word. All right, so now I'm uh, tracking the facing direction for my player. One other thing to note, since we are setting facing in our move script, that means any object that uh, is calling this move script is going to need to have this variable, which makes sense. Anything that's moving, it, you know, it makes sense for it to be facing in some direction. So it's not enough to just add this in the this assign variable facing equals down to the player. We also need to do the same thing to our enemy. So in our object enemies create event, assign variable facing to down. Okay, so now when we're back in our player and we press space, we now have a little bit of information uh, to use to set these x and y uh, numbers. So we're going to, there's four different possibilities um, and we're act differently based on each one. So I'm going to use a conditional or a switch statement. Um, and so create the sword here and then have it jump or just move a little bit in uh, one of these directions. So uh, put in a switch statement here and then, uh, and it's going to be looking at the facing variable. And there's going to be four possible cases. One, two, three, four. And these are the four possible values that facing can be. So I'll make them uh, up, down, left and right. Okay. And now if the if we're facing up, then I want to move this sword uh, up a little bit. But it's actually just occurring to me that um, with all this code we're putting in here, uh, it, it's kind of general purpose to move something in, in some direction. And uh, it's also a lot of, a lot of code. Um, so I think I'm going to break this up into its own script. Uh, so I'm going to go into scripts, create script, and set, set relative position. OK. And back in player, I'm going to move this case statement out. 
cut, set relative position, and paste. And then we'll uh, call that script here. So the set relative position. Uh, but we need to make sure that this set relative position happens to the sword. And this uh, object that's calling the script is the player. Uh, so to specify that this is happening on the sword, uh, type in with and you get this apply to uh, object. So if I, I, can I put this over here. So now if I look at this apply to, this gives me several options. And I can say apply to object sword. And then set the swords relative position. I'll go into my set relative position code here and now I can start actually uh, filling in these cases. So the first thing is if we're going up uh, we want to rotate the sword up. Uh, so let's see set, set our instance rotation and in so in the up case um, we're going to set this use our global macro of up and case down, set it to down, case left, set it to left, and case right, set it to right. We need to actually move uh, this sword. And for that, there is a built-in method called jump to point. This does the actual movement. And so in the case of up, we're going to go negative 32 on the y and 0 on the x. These are both relative and similar things for all these others. So uh, on down, it's 0 on the x, positive 32 on the y. Uh, left it is negative 32 on the x, 0 on the y. And to the right, it is 32 on the x and 0 on the y. And make sure to tick all of these relative boxes on the jump to point, leave them unticked on the set instance rotation. Because uh, in these cases, we're actually rotating it to the left, uh, not just 270 degrees from where it is currently. All right, let's see what happens when we run this. And there is an error. This object sword.facing is not set before reading it. And that is because the object player is applying to the sword, setting this relative position. Set relative position, so this is occurring in the sword, uh, but sword doesn't have a facing value. And you know we could uh, set one in there, but then we'd have to get it to match. Uh, so actually, instead of facing here, I'm just set this to argument zero. And now, on my player, I can pass that in. So right here, here is this facing va uh, variable. Because we've been setting the players facing on movement, we can now pass that into the sword when we apply it. So I'll run this. And still an error, uh, because this, this facing even in here is still applying to the sword. So we need to actually specify that we're looking at the players facing. So for that, uh, I just type in object underscore player dot facing. Uh, so by default, whenever you mention a variable, it's going to, a variables exist in an object. And by default, when you just type a variable, it's going to search the object that the event is in uh, for that variable. Uh, so if this, this was like up here, then it would be looking at the players facing, which exists. Uh, but since it's applying to the sword and the sword doesn't have a facing variable, uh, a computer gets confused by that. So we use this dot notation here to specify that we're referring to a different object. This is not the sword's facing, but the object player is facing. I'm gonna run this one. And there we go, a sword. Uh, creates above me when I go that way, below me when I go that way, right and left. All right. And also just to balance things a little bit based on how my uh, sprite is drawn, um, I think I will, I could also, if I like, uh, spread out the where the sword goes when I jump left or right. Uh, so let's see. 
on up. Uh, I think I'll make this 48 and down at 48. Let's see if that looks a little better. Yeah, I kind of prefer that. It's now it's above my head and below my feet. But now we have another problem. Is if I press this, the space bar really fast, I can get a bunch of swords. And they also show up in weird places when I'm also like turning and, and moving around. And the reason for that is because every time I hit the space bar, I am creating a new sword. So if I press it twice, and they always take the same amount of time to disappear. So if I press space bar, and before that half second is up, I press space bar again, now there's two swords in the scene. And this set relative to position applies to all instances of sword in the scene. When I say apply to object sword, I'm referring to the resource, and so that moves every single instance. So if there's two, then they both move. If there's three, all three of them move. Um, so next, I'd like to specify that, um, that it's only the sword that I just created that's moving. In fact, if there is an old sword present, I'd like to just get rid of it. I'm going to create a temporary variable here called new sword. So when this object sword is created using this create instance, uh, this value is going to be stored, uh, this instance is going to be stored in this target field if it's filled in. Uh, if not, then it just won't do anything with that with this information. It will just create it and then forget about it. Uh, by filling in this field, then we're storing the instance here. Okay, so now I'm going to go through all of the existing swords in the room and um, if it's if the new one matches the temporarily created one uh, then we'll execute the script otherwise we'll destroy it. So how do we check whether this the sword that we're iterating through and all the resources is the one that we just created? Uh, well, let's, this is a conditional, so it's going to be some kind of if statement. And I'm going to use this check if variable satisfies a condition. i put that up here. And if it does, you know, then, then we'll execute this. Um, and so what we're going to do here is type in id at the top. And so this is a built-in variable. Um, and this is going to check the ID of the specific instance that we're iterating through on this object sword resource. And down here, I'll say new sword dot ID. And uh, this is the ID of this sword. So every instance in the game has an ID. Uh, so this one has an ID, and then if I press one or press two or three or four, um, they're all going to they're all going to have one as well. So now and then that's so that handles it if uh, this is the correct sword and if it isn't then I use this else statement so if this is true we do this if not then we do this um, and if this happens then the else will not happen uh, so in the else then we destroy the uh, that sword run the game and now if I press spacebar a bunch of times, then the sword is only created once. Okay, and this is also, by the way, gener a general way of how you can get a reference to a specific object uh, inside of Game Maker. So next, we're going to use the sword to destroy enemies. So I'll just uh, say in my sword event, if it collides uh, with an enemy, then we will destroy it. Just add an event and look for collision and then pick the object that we want uh, and object enemy. And then we'll just say destroy instance and we're now this is occurring in the sword so by default it would destroy the sword which is not what we want. We click this thing and then say other. And now it will destroy the other uh, actor in this collision, which is the enemy. So now as I play this, I walk over to an enemy and stab it, and it's gone. Great. 
and that's gotten rid of all of them. So that's it for our sword swinging tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.